So, uh, you were talking this morning about the tests, which I was always suspicious of. Uh, I could never understand why they had these great long things that had to be sucked right up your nose to do a test when you had to wear a mask because any little bit of spit coming out was supposed to give everybody the COVID. And uh, so, why couldn't they just get a little thing on the end of your tongue? Like that. Yeah. Uh, I can never understand that. It went uh, against my intuition, so I never had any of those at all. Yeah. Uh, but you were saying this morning something really interesting uh, about what might yeah, be kind of behind yes. it. So I think a lot of people have heard at this stage about that there was cycle thresholds. So to do with how many times the test gets repeated, you can make any test come up positive. So this is separate to that. This is just talking about where that swab went and so if we take a slice down like literally it's called a sagittal plane all the way down the middle and the anatomy of the nose as such is that there's something called turbinate and literally it, the the biggest one it's about that long going back from here so horizontally you have this anatomy that goes along here along here along here um, and it's actually quite deep and fascinating the structure of the nose at the top of the nose, you actually have something that's called the cribriform plate. Now, this is a very, very thin piece of bone and it's perforated, so it has little holes in it on top of that. But the bone itself even is so thin, though in anatomy departments or places where there's skulls, it's very often broken because it's literally side of paper thin. So there were two ways those swabs were being done. Um, and let's bear in mind that a lot of people who were taking the swabs, including at test centres, were completely untrained. Other people had had a small amount of training. So if they were going according to the training, then they were doing it horizontally, which at that part of the anatomy, if you go far enough back there, you're actually getting very close to the most magnetic part of the brain. If they were going up more vertically, which is what most of them were doing, then they're getting up to this cribriform plate, which is where you are crossing the blood-brain barrier. Because that's actually where the nerves come down that are to do with the sense of smell. So all those holes are meant for the penetration of the nerves that lead directly back into the brain. So there is no, 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 no medical reason whatsoever why you would ever, ever, ever need to shove a swab up there or there. Either of those, the only thing behind that could be harm. You literally, you can't just write. There's no special kind of secretion thing right up there where it's like, oh yes, that's where the great mucus production from the top of the brain comes down. No, that's where you've got direct contact between the outside world and your brain. And of course, there were horror stories where people had actually had brain come out. That was the worst case scenario. But even without that, these swabs, and they weren't like people often kind of went, oh, cotton swabs. No, they weren't cotton swabs. These were sharp, hollow fiber swabs. So the whole thing was made up of, if you can imagine like spiky hedgehog coming out, but every one of those tubes was actually hollow. And looking under a microscope, even just at a basic magnification, you could see they were hollow and you could see that they were blunt ended and stuff was coming out of some of them, which we think was probably hydrogel. So, yes, so <laughs> nothing it was, good to be said about them. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so the motive behind them, would you say, what would you say the motive was? I cannot, having also, you know, as well as doing anatomy, I have also done ear, nose and throat. Um, surgery is a job and I cannot see any any justification other than harm. I right can't. okay and you are obviously a, a qualified doctor that's got many years in the NHS did I hear? Yeah that? yeah so a couple of decades but I am retired now I don't do any form of medical practice NHS private or anything else. Right okay uh, well I know uh, that's confirmed what well, my intuition and Good a lot intuition. of other people's uh, intuition. Yeah, yeah, well. yeah. But Stay clear of them, just in case they get rolled out again for some other yeah. suspicious reason. Brilliant. Because well, Carrie Mullis isn't here anymore, unfortunately, to tell us about what nonsense the uh, cycle threshold is. So we, yes. need, we need to be aware. These are 
it's not good. Okay, well, your talk this morning blew me away. Uh, that's only a little part of it. Uh, but Dr. T, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.